Imperfection is perfection. I think Sydney has so much natural beauty, it's just a beautiful city. I did a few DJ gigs at empty clubs, sort of as a warm-up set before flume was a thing. I did one when I got big enough, and I had five friends come down, and they were the only ones dancing. That was one of my earliest ones. I was super nervous. With Spotify, I think people are discovering a lot of artists they might not discover otherwise. Every kid has a laptop, everyone can make music, so in order to stand out, I think it's important to find that sonic identity, I think my sonic identity, and mine is finding these weird sounds that may not necessarily sound that musical, and make them sound musical. Making sounds that literally no one has ever heard before because the software and the technology's never been there, and pairing that with great songwriting, then that's what's exciting for me. That's what I want to do. There was this serial, and it had a special promotion with a CD inside the box that had a really simple music making program on it. I got it, and that opened my mind to being able to make music on a computer and seeing all the different layers. For me, one of the downfalls of electronic music is that it can feel a little soulless or robotic. I was an avid Pokemon card collector. Sydney's beautiful, the weather's great, and the air's fresh and clean, but it doesn't have the scene and the amount of like-minded people. At home, things are very comfortable, but I feel like putting myself out there a bit. I definitely wanted the second record to be a much more grandiose thing. I wanted to push myself and make a big statement. I know how to make a record that commercial radio or Triple J will smash now. It's kind of hard to stay true and write what you would write if you didn't have that in your head. Because I know I can get way more airplay and get this much bigger. And that's what I'm trying to avoid doing. Trying to avoid the poisons of success. Probably the number one most important thing in my music is not to sound like anyone else. It is hard in this day and age. Along with the free, where I sing quite a bit. There are additional songs on Skin, where you can hear my voice in the background, lots of poos and ahs. But more often than not, I use my vocals to prompt other rappers and singers to feel calmer, better, bolder. I think it would be nice to see more of an open culture to different music. I don't think I can name any names or anything, but this is what I've wanted to do for a long time, to have Flume as my creative outlet and to work on the biggest songs in the world, like pop and come up with the idea and send it off. I think at first the Flume project really started out as an online thing. I used Facebook and SoundCloud, and I think we got lucky because it felt like a bit of a golden age of those social media platforms. So I managed to create quite a solid fan base online. I struggled with the pressure of having the successful record after the first record. Second album syndrome. I'm living proof, it's very real. I had an idea when I was 18 or 19 to start tutoring people, like the way that people get tutored in saxophone or guitar, but for production. I really enjoyed it, but I don't have time for that anymore. This life and this job and this position that I'm put in, it forces you to grow up quick. I definitely got dropped in the deep end. My parents used to play me this album when I couldn't go to sleep. It was called, Deep Forest. I think it was a self-titled record. It's actually still one of my favorite albums of all time. I've been listening to a lot of music by Arca. There's a lot of creativity in the industry, but I don't necessarily think that the most creative DJs or producers are always the biggest ones. I think it would be nice to see more of an open culture to different music. I think that's happening. With Spotify, I think people are discovering a lot of artists they might not discover otherwise. The music I was making for people not to dance to was the one they were dancing to. To me, skin is alien and kind of weird, it weirds me out. It's strange, but it's also really intimate and personal, it's living, organic. That's how I want the music to sound, I want it to feel alien and strange, but also like it's got a heartbeat, like it's got a soul, like it's not made by a robot. I feel like the first record was really finding my feet, figuring out what music I wanted to make. Now that I've done that, I feel like I've got a much clearer idea of what I want to sound like and what I want to discover. It's exciting. Honestly, production when you first start can be difficult to wrap your head around. I never expected to make a lot of money from music. I want to keep Flume kind of experimental, weird, melodic, pretty. There's a lot of creativity in the industry. But I don't necessarily think that the most creative DJs or producers are always the biggest ones. It's always the first 10,000 SoundCloud listens, that was definitely a big moment, 
seeing the online stuff grow and crowds grow. I had this little Bon Iver phase a few years back, Flume was one of my favorite songs. The thing I find frustrating about rock music is, how different can you make an acoustic drum kit sound, an electric guitar and vocals. It's very stuck, whereas with electronic music, new sounds are being created. I don't think I make dance music, it's not even April 4th, and it's slow. I just want to try writing for other people, cause it's quite exciting. I get bored of music really easily, so I always try and make music that makes sense, but then it's just a little bit wrong. I was delivering papers when I was, like, 10 or 11, and I'd always daydream about being an artist as a full-time thing. In the dressing room, we've just made it really zen, low lighting, lots of candles, and fresh, healthy food. When I heard Flying Lotus, I was like, wow, okay, everything can be off the grid. The thing I find frustrating about rock music is, how different can you make an acoustic drum kit sound, an electric guitar and vocals. I used to never feel pressure to be creative, it's always just been a fun thing. And then suddenly, it's my job, and people are asking, where's the record? To me it's all about textures, and that's the side of music that I'm finding really exciting. I feel like it's one of the only parts of music that mankind hasn't fully discovered yet. Once I'm in a situation where I cannot do anything for three years and go off the map, I'll focus more on writing. Right now, I want to just make Flume awesome, and big. I've been having meetings with people, just everywhere in the world, and it's like, hey, really love you to work with me, send me some ideas. That's the crazy part. It was a difficult second record. I had moments where I couldn't write, had moments where I was writing lots. It was just a massive learning process for me. I just want to write another record that's as good or better than the one I've already made. That's my main goal, to follow up stronger than before. I'm a really heavy sleeper. When I wake up I'm a terrible morning person. I think the thing that LA had on Sydney is an awesome music scene, especially for what I do. Often, when I work with a vocalist, I like to focus on the melodies first. I've grown up by the beach all my life, and I almost get anxiety if I haven't been swimming for a couple weeks or a month. It kind of builds up, so I try and get out as much as possible. Visit our website for more quotes. Quoting.com